Today we're going to quickly demo some of the most useful parts of Lunchbox for Grasshopper for engineers. So some of that includes the automatic trusses that are really quick to generate, bracing, um, diagrids, facade elements and space frames. We'll also show how to import an export to a spreadsheet using CVS or the other read-write components and a couple of the other small items that are also useful on a day-to-day -day basis, so practical stuff. Okay, so I'm just going to give a very quick demo of some of the most useful functions for engineers of the Lunchbox plugin for Grasshopper. And I'll provide a link to where you can get the Lunchbox plugin, which is free, in the description below. So the first one, first component here that I'm going to show is trusses, which is really useful. It just takes two curves as inputs. So I'll just select one curve and these are just simple lines and a second curve and then it builds a truss for you. So you can just use a slider to change how many divisions that truss has. You can also toggle the type and there's four types, zero to three. So you can see these types here as I scroll through. That's a veer and deal. and the outputs, it splits into um, the diagonals and the verticals and the horizontal uh, components. The next two components are good ways of quickly creating bracing in a building and they use surfaces as an input. So if your architecture just has surfaces um, as walls, you can just quickly put bracing in there. The first one does diagonal bracing like that and the second one uh, does cross bracing so with the diagonal I've got the surface there and again I can just change however many bays of bracing I need <clears throat> or want. You can also do split it up vertically as well and the 2D version looks like this so that's cross bracing And you can do vertical, not um, divide that vertically and horizontally as per the other one. The third of these type of elements I'm going to show is the diagrid, which can be used as a structural member for facades typically, um, but also other things. And again, you can split it up into a number of divisions. You've also got type and changing from true to false changes how uh, where the nodes are selected from so you can see with false it starts on the start of the line with a node whereas uh, with true the nodes are centered uh, on the line it's actually um, starts it from a different direction so depending on how the uh, line is split up. The next one's a 3D truss, a space truss, which can be used for big long span surfaces. So I've, I've modeled a surface as a roof here. <clears throat> and if I turn that on, you can see it creates a 3D truss. And again, you can just simply change however many divisions you want. You can also change the depth of the truss pretty easily. I'm going in meter increments, but you can obviously change it to anything you want. So that's a really quick way to create a 3D space truss. It also outputs the lines into three groups. So the top cords, bottom cords and webs. So you can change the sizes independently. 
The last of these type I'll show is diamond. So this is similar in that it takes a surface and it divides it up into however many divisions you need. The difference here is it creates diamonds and triangles. So you can see and it creates them as a surface. So it's more of a facade tool, but it could be useful to do it that way rather than lines. So I've just moved one here. You can see it's created a little diamond. Um, and I've just moved it away from the facade to illustrate. So the next part of the plugin I'll show is this data area. So there's some really good ways to get data into different formats. Uh, you can use this to create um, Excel outputs and get stuff in and out via Excel if you like to work that way. So first off, I've just baked one of those space trusses we just did <clears throat> into Rhino. And I'm just going to put this, uh, put those curves into this curve component here. So all these components are just formatting some data for this component here, which is CSV. And that's just comma separated values. But it's also a system that Excel can read and write really easily. <clears throat> so I'm going to have some columns in my Excel spreadsheet. Um, size length XYZ coordinates and an ID. So all I'm doing here is I'm finding out how many curves I've got with this long thing here, so 128. I'm repeating 0.05, so this is in meters, and I'm saying that it's 50 millimeter diameter circular hollow sections. I'm just sizing everything uh, that way for the moment. I'm getting the length of the curve. So each length, each curve will have its length that can be uh, determined through that component. Then I'm just getting the midpoint and its XYZ components and I'm getting the curves ID. So you can see here with this component which is from Lunchbox CSV. I'm putting some headings, size length XYZ ID, and it just simply outputs it into CSV format. So how can I get this to Excel? Well, it's quite simple. All you can do is say stream destination. If you put it into, uh, oh, I should have said, into a panel stream destination and you select an output I've done this already so I won't do it again and then you say stream contents and again I won't do it now because I've already done it and that creates this which not Excel but a spreadsheet program and it's just got all my outputs in a spreadsheet that I've gotten from directly from the model. So its size as I set to 50 mil, the length of each member, its XYZ coordinates and an ID. Now you could put all sorts of other things in here. You could put um, the thickness of the wall, you could put the grade of the steel, uh, anything you want. Uh, you, you could run it through analysis and put uh, its utilization so the other thing you can obviously do is read your CSV and get the properties back out so it's got a read CSV here so if I just plug that in simply and then I get those values and I explode that tree because it um, creates a tree from my original tree. So it's recreated the same data I put in. And I'm using the radius that I set, the diameter that I set, in the pipe command, which is just makes a um, pipe out of a line. You can see that it's creating a pipe 
for every curve of um, equal diameter. Now, say I wanted to control this via Excel. So instead of taking it directly from this component here, I'm going to take it from the file that we created. So you just use this read file component, which is standard in Grasshopper, with a path. I've already set that. But before I do that, I'm going to change some of these properties in my spreadsheet. So I'm going to change some of these members to 100 mil radius. And I'm just going to select a load of them. So now you should see if I use these new results, some of the members are d twice the size of others. So I'm just going to enable this file reading component. And you can see this time the members I changed in my spreadsheet are double the radius of some of the other members. So this is just a quick demo, but you could make this a lot more sophisticated. You could split it up into your top bottom chords and your web chords um, and label that all in your spreadsheet so that you know which components you're working on, etc, etc. Now I should point out that Lunchbox also includes Excel Read and Excel Write as components in this workflow menu. Now they read and write directly to the Excel program as it's running in the background. However, depending on your computer setup, this can be a bit tricky to get working. Uh, but if it works for you, it might be a useful way to do it even quicker. As well as CSV, you can use other forms of data like JSON and XML, which are used um, on the web or with other programs that might want to read that type of format. But the similar process um, is involved. We can read and write to those types. As well as that, you can also see your Excel file as a simple spreadsheet grid. And that's with Create Data Grid. So it just pops up a window. So here I've got my headers again, the same stuff and my same data. If I click that one, right click that, you can see the Excel spreadsheet just as this pop-up window. You can also create a little chart with some of the data. So if I go view chart, you can see different ways of charting that information and this is might not be particularly useful but you could extract a lot of other information from that model and create create quick charts which you can also save so that's pretty cool as well so the last few components I'll show especially these first two are extremely useful as well and that is sort points and sort, sort curves. So what often happens with Grasshopper when you're playing around with lines and points is that you end up with duplicates. So for example, I've got my lines for this grid here, space grid, space frame, and I want to get the start and end points. Now obviously where there's a junction, they're going to overlap. So I'm going to have lots and lots of start and end points. But say I just want the unique ones. So there's actually 256 start and end points if I combine them. But actually there's only 41 points in this whole system. So you can see that it creates, it gives you just the unique points, which is really useful uh, for a lot of applications. Um, the indices is something you can reference to as well. So for each of the 41 points, so 0 to 40, it tells you the index 
uh, in this set of that unique point. Similarly with sort curve, um, you'll often find when you're playing around with architectural models or baking stuff that you'll have overlapping lines or you'll have short lines overlapped with a long line. But sort curve will, again, similar to the points, just strip out all the doubles and just give you the uniques. So that's really useful. Um, another component that can be useful is layer. So you can create layers. Um, you can also get some layer information to other things with um, Lunchbox. But yeah, creating layers is good because you can put things on different layers automatically. So you could put uh, different levels on different layers if you want, or columns on a different layer with beams on another layer, etc. Now the other, the last thing I'll show um, is really powerful. Um, might not have applications for day-to-day -day engineering in all cases, but in some situations it could be extremely useful. Um, and that is this machine learning section. Um, I'm just going to show linear regression here, but you've got other regressions, nonlinear, etc. And even some more complex stuff if you specialize in that area. But if I just explain linear regression, for those who don't know it, it's basically you give it a set of inputs and outputs and then it plots a line or it can predict what the end result will be based on a further set of inputs. So here you can see my inputs are 1, 2, 3 and my outputs are 5, 6, 7. So that's pretty easy. Obviously it's worked out or the components trying to work out what the relationship is between inputs and outputs and here it's pretty obvious you just add 4 1 plus 4 is 5, 2 plus 4 is 6 so it works that out internally and then you can put any input you want so I've got 8, 1, 9 and so if it adds 4 to each of those you'd expect 12, 5 and 13 so that's pretty straightforward um, example but um, obviously can be used in a lot more complex situations and with um, less reliable uh, relationships. So there are a lot more components in Lunchbox. I've just quickly highlighted a few that I feel engineers would find particularly useful. But well recommended to add this to Grasshopper. It's um, got some really good tools. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.